Hello, everybody. My name is Eric Eisenhut. Uh, we are blessed tonight to have with us three coaches that have coached the highest levels here in United States youth soccer and at the national team level. Um, Charlie and Verso, Ryan Gata Thompson, and Ian Foyer. Uh, before we get into the program tonight, before we get into the introductions of these three, I would like to do a quick selfless plug, if I may. If anyone's interested in United Goalkeeping Alliance, if anyone's interested in growing your goalkeeper department or program, or if you're looking for additional revenues in addition to building your goalkeeper department, by all means, please reference United Goalkeeping Alliance at, and you can contact us at info at unitedgkalliance.com. All right, everybody, let's get at it. Today, we are blessed to have with us Charlie Inverso out of New Jersey, Ian Foyer out of California, Ryan Gata Thompson out of Texas. And our topic for tonight is the goalkeeping intangibles and what the higher level coaches are looking for. So let's introduce our coaches first. Charlie Inverso is out of New Jersey. He's currently with the U.S. Youth National Team, U15 coaching staff. Then he's had 45 years of college coaching experience at Rutgers, Princeton, Ryder, Mercer County, and others. He's also a U.S. Soccer A licensed coach. Charlie Inverso, welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. I'm uh, actually a, a scout, a goalkeeper scout um, for, well, for the U.S. Fair point. Fair used point. to be with used to be with the U15 national team but um well welcome Charlie looking forward to, to hearing about thanks. you your experiences and learning from you tonight thank you thanks thanks for having me Eric absolutely also with Charlie's Ian Foyer out of California uh, Ian's currently with the LA Galaxy as a director of goalkeeping former US men's national team goalkeeper and goalkeeper coach he played at the uh, Premier League over in Europe with West Ham and Loughton United, and he's currently a U.S. soccer instructor for the A, B, and Pro A license. Ian, welcome tonight, sir. Glad to have you. Glad to be here, man. I always appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Thank you very much. Um, and lastly, but certainly not least, Ryan got a Thompson out of Texas. Uh, Ryan's with the Houston Dynamo and the director of goalkeeping. Um, this summer, he was the 2000 or this past summer, excuse me, he was the U.S. men's national team gold cup goalkeeper coach, former Jamaican international USSF, a licensed coach, senior licensed coach, and a UGKA board member, Ryan Thompson. Ryan, welcome tonight, sir. Thank you, brother, man. Happy to be here. Super, super, super excited about all the conversation that we are going to have today and, you know, learn from each other. A lot of great minds here. So, hey, let's let's go for it, brother. <laughs> you could, I couldn't have said it any better, my friend. I couldn't have said it any better. Um, so, guys, what we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to obviously speak to the intangibles. But before we get into the intangibles, we're going to speak to, first of all, let's define them. What are they? Um, and then some of the high-level uh, subjects that we're going to speak to, accountability, can goalkeepers learn and develop from failure? We're going to speak to leadership, personality, and relationship building and relationship maintenance. We'll speak to the emotional balance of goalkeepers their, in their presence. And then most importantly, at this level, winning matches and game-changing plays. So first and foremost, let's define intangibles. Uh, Charlie, if I could start with you, how would you define what an intangible is from a goalkeeper perspective? Well, it's something that's not measurable. Okay, so we can we can measure uh, a, a lot of things from a goalkeeper, uh, goals against and saves, etc. It's it's just these little things that that turn up um, that a goalkeeper brings to to a match uh, that they're either good at um, or not so good at, and and we we know that intangibles are are, are very often the difference between winning and losing. But one thing I want to say is intangibles can be developed with, with, with proper training. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. What, let me ask you this. Why are they important? Let's, let me turn that over to Ryan. Ryan, why, why are these intangibles important at the higher level or even for any level for that matter? Yeah, no, I, I just, I, I want to just add a little bit more as, onto what Charlotte said earlier, you know, it's about it not being Thank measured. You. It's hard to measure, but it can always be felt. It's the value that you bring in environment. You know, the value that you bring in the games. It's 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 the things that it's unique about you okay. that makes you special to be able to add value to make any environment or a, a team or someone around you 
way better than what they actually are. You know, it is important because it's the X factors. It's the thing that's going to bring out the X factors. It's the thing that's going to win your games. It's the thing that's going to bring the team together. It is the things that make the fans come in the stands. It's the things that you know bring across the finish line. So it is important. You know, ultimately for me, it's 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 so much valid valuable to any environment there is. Love it. I love it. Ian, can you list a few of these intangibles? What do you see as the intangibles that Charlie and Ryan are talking about? Um, just for me, I think it's exactly what, what, what Charlie and Ryan said is, is these are so important and here's why at the level that these guys coach, everybody's pretty good. Technically everyone. I mean, if you've gotten to this point where you're training with the national team or you're training, uh, you, you're playing first, uh, professional fo football or, or, or college, you're pretty good. So what now separates you? And for me, these are, are just massive, massive points that sometimes get overlooked. Um, I think we look at sometimes goalkeepers as can they fly around? Can they, you know, and, and for me, everybody can kind of do that, but not everybody can, for example, walk into a locker room and change the whole vibe just by walking into a locker room. And that's your presence. That's your confidence. Uh, borderline arrogance, but it's a confidence. And I think when you experience that firsthand, you you get a feel for um, what is possible. And I've been in some pretty um, impressive locker rooms and with some amazing players. And I've seen a, a player walk into the locker room and you just immediately kind of take a deep breath and go, wow, okay. And then you get this feeling of like, we're going to win today. Yep. And I think... You know, that for me, when I look at and I, you know, kind of are scouting or or deciding on a goalkeeper, presence is a massive, massive part of it. And in all honesty, presence doesn't always have to be height. For example, I, ha I, I, I had to scout some keepers one time and this one goalkeeper was, you know, six foot five and this other goalkeeper was maybe six foot. And I actually preferred the six foot one because they he had more presence. And he walked with a certain confidence, his, you know, head up, shoulders up. He shook your hand. He looked you in the eye. So, you know, a lot of these things are so important. And that's why I'm excited to, to, to do this, you know, podcast tonight and listen to everybody's advice is it's such a massive part of the game when we're looking at, you know, players, and especially goalkeepers, because our position is a very dominant and a very commanding and confident even if you're not confident inside, you have to show confidence, you know? So I think it's, uh, it's, it's very important. So hey, love if it. I could add just one thing to that. Um, yeah, Charlie, go ahead. Eric, what, you know, you and I have had a lot of conversations in the last couple of months and we're talking about uh, more specifically goalkeeping evaluation. And we kind of came up with the term um, eye candy that a lot of times we can get, we can get drawn to a goalkeeper uh because of their eye candy, their vertical jump, the size of their hands, uh, their height, um, at, sometimes even as far as, as how how well they um, they distribute the ball. But but a lot of times, the, what you know, just going back to what Ian and, and and Ryan had discussed, some of some of these qualities is that we we can't get caught up in in just watching uh, the goalkeeper how he looks outwardly. Um, as we have to get to know what's inside of them, and that takes a long time. Yeah, that's well said. Well said. So let's start. Let's speak to three of them: accountability, learning and developing from failure, and attention span and focus. Ryan Thompson, you can start with either any of these three bullets. Which one kind of jumps off the page to you? I think the big, the biggest thing is accountability. You know. Um, as a goalkeeper, you know, we gotta look, we gotta look at the game this week because everything starts from the game, right? We 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 see the big picture, you know. So the mere for that we see the big picture, we're able to solve problems. But the problem is if we don't have relationships with the people around us, like our backline, if they don't trust us, it's gonna it's gonna be hard for us to actually solve any problem there is. And usually what happens is we start can see goals. 
So now, for me, the biggest things I got to take accountability for to build relationships. And how do I do that? Might be different. And for me, that piece of it is a it's a, it's a intangible that's unique to me. A way I go about doing that, you know, during my playing days or the way I teach it right now in my in my environment, is you used to see young goalkeepers, their defenders make a mistake. It's so easy for them to jump and shout at them. Oh, you should be doing this. You should be doing that. But that's a that's a critical moment when they actually make a mistake for you to actually come up with a big save. And after you make a big save, it's a moment for you to then go and put your hands around your 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 your, your defender, whoever that person is at a moment, to like, hey, I got you. In that moment, you just build trust. So what starts to happen, the intangibles, the things you start to develop relationship. Now when you actually speak, the player will listen to you. You know, so now you're it, it, it filtering from one person to the next person. So as a, as a goalkeeper who you, you could consider yourself as a leader, you should take actions. You should be accountable for everything that happens because you actually can do something about it. And there's a moment, an example of you solving problems and building relationship, which then leads you to, to have more impact and influence. It's hard to measure, but that simple gesture of, I got you, you know, you know, next time, you know, we, you know, just listen to me, you know, we'll make sure we solve it before we get to this point. That's right there for me. I want to talk on. Love it, Ian. Continue, man. Which which one of these three jumps off the page to you? Um, God, they all dude, they're so they're all so important. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, there, there's really again, it's 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 mental toughness, it's leadership, it's accountability, it's uh, uh, just a full package of 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 a character that we call goalkeeper, and all of the top. Um, one of the things that I like with just analyzing goalkeepers is I think if you take the top 10 goalkeepers in the world or 20, whatever, they all are very good at different things. Some are better, some are worse, um, but they kind of all have one thing in common. And that's just this, uh, a certain calmness that I like. And I, and I, and for me, I like goalkeepers that are, that are calm yet um, commanding. And I like keepers that are, um, you know, know when to uh, be vocal and know when to kind of be quiet. And it's, it's a balance of so many emotions. And that's just for, for me, it's reading, reading the room, reading the moment and adjusting to the players around you as well. And knowing, OK, my right back went through a rough game last game. You go back to what Ryan said and my right back makes a mistake. I save a 1v1. And I, I tell my right back, hey, man, that, that's what I'm here for. I'm here for you. I got you. So don't worry about it. And, and it's, it's transferring a confidence throughout the whole team. And, um, you know, so, so again, it's just – it's hard to pinpoint one or, one or two things because there's so many characteristics that go into a goalkeeper. And when you find someone that has – you know, five, six, seven, or eight of them of the top ones that we're going to talk about tonight, I think you got a pretty solid goalkeeper. Yep. And, and like Charlie said, there's a lot of them that you can teach. And I try to introduce those into my training sessions, into my my demeanor um, as a coach. And even my demeanor as a coach is very, you know, before a game, I'm very calm. I'm very – if I'm nervous, my keeper is going to take that on. It's like my dog. If I come home and I'm nervous, he's going to tell what's going on. <laughs> so they sense it. And <laughs> as a coach, we have a big responsibility to be a certain confident calmness, if you want to call it, um, that will transcend to your goalkeepers. You know, Ryan, I'm going to take what Ian just said. I'm going to transfer this right to you. But I want to speak about a specific instance in the Gold Cup, which I know you are aware of. Um, learning and developing from failure. I want you to speak about the Gold Cup loss and Matty Turner's response to it and his development in that situation. Now, I think, you know, it's it's important. It's all part of the process. You know, every, every goalkeeper go out there to, to to be the best they can be. I know for sure we, we prepare to the best of our ability, you know, from the PKs, you know, trying to analyze every single player there, you know, and the, their, their, their their traits. And, you know, ultimately, you know, he went out there, he gave his best. You know, I one thing I got to say about Matty, he, he, an unbelievable student, by the way, unbelievable person to work with. You know, it's been a while I've worked with someone that 
actually enjoy being a goalkeeper, like really enjoy every single moment of being a goalkeeper. He live in the moment, he die in the moment, and mm. he do it all over again the next day. So that was refreshing to see a goalkeeper like that. And, you know, coming up big in, in, in Canada game, coming up big, you know, save against my, my country, Jamaica, you know, and <laughs> and just and just exuberating confidence throughout the team, you know, um, knowing that we have someone like him back back there who's going to make the big save. So, you know, leading up to Panama game, there was a tremendous confidence. There was tremendous preparation going into that. And un the unfortunate thing, it went to PK. The unfortunate thing, you know, the couple of players miss, you know, no one went up there to miss PKs, but that opposing goalkeeper saved one more than Maddie. And to be fair, you know, of course, you know, losing a game is hard. But a few weeks later, you know, he had to go report to Arsenal camp. So you deal with those disappointments, you learn from it, and you go prepare yourself for the next best thing. You know, I think the ultimate thing there, Eric, you know, to your point, you can't spend too much time worried about what didn't go 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 right for you. What what you could spend time and like, okay, this went right, this worked, this felt good. I'm gonna let this stick. This didn't go well, so you know what? Maybe, maybe I need to spend a little bit more time working on that. And just sometimes it's just the nature of the game. Sometimes players. You know, they just a step ahead of you. They're they're it's it's a competition. Whatever we do is a competition, and everybody's competing to win. And sometimes your opponent just gonna be better than you. And on that day, they were better. And you know, for me, a week ago I saw well this weekend, you know, he got transferred to Nottingham, and he had the game of his life this week. That tell me he is already it's been past the 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 memory, the the the, the learning process, and the development is already fully in force. And to see him out there making some save this weekend was unbelievable. So it's all soon he can get it and move forward. Brian, you you told me something this week. Um, and we, we were talking throughout the Gold Cup, though, and when you were coaching. And one of the things you said to him was, you said to me, excuse me, about him, the team loves playing for him. Yes. Like they just, they are just like excited to like eat a ball in the face for Matt Turner. <laughs> you know, like they, they're, they're, their excitement to defend and that, that defensive culture. A hundred percent. So you 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 talk about intangibles. When you look at his story, his story is so unique. It's it's mm -hmm. it's the underdog story. You know, it's 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 the guy who never really got drafted. This guy who never he was he, he was a walk on. You know, and he knows that. So every single day matters for him. That's what I got from him. That's what I got from working for him. Every single people around him, he makes them feel important. I'm going to give you an example. You know, Jamaica versus United States of America. Um, you know, I represent Jamaica for 16 plus years for, for those who don't know. And here am I in the Gold Cup. The last time Jamaica played the U.S., you know, I was playing against the U.S. as a goalkeeper. And now the next time around, I'm coaching against Jamaica. So here am I preparing against my own country. And Maddie and I went over a million and one set pieces and PKs and we distinctly mentioned if Leon Bailey steps up for this PK, he's going to go to this direction. This is what a study showed us. So when the, the time came and he, Leon Bailey stepped up for it, he he, he he looked to the side, we gave the signal. He trusted the signal. He trusted the, the work that we put together. He trusted the relationship that we had. He went to the right side. He made the save. What followed after that is now staying on this topic about intangibles is everybody was happy. You know, we all were happy. We went on to tie the game. U.S. didn't lose. But someone sent me an article the next day. And it was Matt Turner talking about the work that we did together. Matt Turner talking about how much he enjoyed working with me. And, you know, it must have been tough, you know, preparing against his country. And, you know, but, I'm, you know, the, it, we trust the work that we did. And, it was me. Is Ryan was the one that helped me through this process. He had no reason to give me any credit whatsoever, zero. I wasn't looking for any because as a coach, I'm doing it for the player. I'm doing it for the you know. We, we want to see every player out there win, and that's why I did it. I I enjoy my job so much, but the mere fact that he went ahead and gave me a nice little write up, gave me some love. In other words. He make me as a coach want to go above and beyond for, for him. And that right there is intangible. He's a humble, hungry, honest human. 
you know. So that's the little thing we were talking about there, Eric, you know, why people want to work for Matt, why the team want to play for him. Because he's a and good it, human being. Yeah, and, and basically, Ryan, what you were saying, like these five bullets right here from leadership, his, his energetic personality, magnetic personality, and how he builds relationships, whether it's with his team, obviously, and obviously what you just meant with his coaching staff. He was happy about himself and his team. He's talking obviously positively and the emotional balance he has even after a, you know, that that shootout loss. Like he checks the boxes and all that. And it's cool to hear it not only from from I'm sorry, not only to see it, but to to have you share that, Ryan, to me is is awesome. So I, I really appreciate you sharing that because that goes a long way with me and, and hopefully others on this on this call tonight. A little things better. Uh, little things. Yeah. Charlie, um, let me let me turn this over to you, if I may. You and I also spoke a lot this summer regarding some of these bullet points here. And the one things that we spoke up that that really kind of jumped off the page or was tangible with me was was the thing was the, the bullet point here on relationship building and and kind of the 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 relationships with the backs, relationship with your back four and teammates, and knowing that it's everyone's different and you have to understand people to be good at this can you expand upon that for me please yeah i mean I, getting off the topic i could talk about matt turner all night i can listen to <laughs> go right ahead by the way if you have something uh, to say please do no i mean so in in the u.s um national team youth scouting network e each position is there's a profile player and and clearly matt turner is is the profile for for the goalkeeper the number one position um but uh, you know I, we played against them in, in college. Uh, when I was at Ryder, we played against them three times. And this is a guy who came from nowhere. This was a guy who, if, if you guys out there don't know the story, um, he got he, he got put in um, his sophomore year. He played one game his sophomore year. Uh, they were winning 1-0 at, at halftime. And there was a shot that, that came and hit the crossbar and went straight up. And Matt went to catch the ball and it hit off his gloves and went into goal and it went viral. Um, I mean, this poor kid, <laughs> he, he was a non-scholarship player uh, in his sophomore year, never saw the field again until his junior year. And then, you know, just gradually built up from being, um, and, and um, our former goalkeeper coach at, at Ryder, Elvier uh, Presovic is on the call. His best friend is Javier DeSima, the goalkeeper coach at, at Fairfield. Where this guy came from to, to be where he is now is just an incredible story, especially the work that he put in with kicking the ball with his feet. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, he's still not beautiful to look at um, in a lot of parts of his game, and, and especially with his kicking. Um, but it's it's the drive. It's that growth mindset that he has. So, um, yeah, so that, you know, that's – that's how strongly I feel about him and and Ryan and never never worked with him like you did, but I always got the sense that defenders were ready to do anything for him. Yes, yeah, yeah, Charlie, and you know, I when it, when it, when we think about goalkeeping, right? It, it it looks different everywhere, right? As long as they're keeping the ball about out the back of the net, that's what he as does. As long as they're connecting and they're making people around them get the job done. You know, yeah. that's what it is. Leadership. You know, yeah. it's and I can I can tell you like I I have I haven't seen uh, it's been a while since I've seen someone like that. Yeah. That guy doesn't take a rep off. He doesn't yeah. take a rep off. It's a hundred percent every single time. The human yeah. inside a hundred percent. You know, it's just the relationship that he builds. You know, he, he's talking Jamaican to me. He's not Jamaican, but he's he's like connected <laughs> to me. You know, and that. <laughs> That makes it makes you it makes you feel at home, yeah. no? Yeah, yeah. No, no. He's 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 he's. Oh, I'm a big fan. Um. So, uh, Eric, what the heck are we talking about? I talking <laughs> Honestly, about hey, term. listen, like, man. I I'm here to facilitate and stay out of the way. You three, so you three figure this yeah. out. Now that no, said, I, uh, I we were, we started with relationship building, and we we Matt Turner obviously was brought into the conversation, and and the way he handled the Gold Cup. Um, but Ian, I want to get get your two cents on this slide as well before I move on to the next. Um, speak to me about like just being optimistic. And someone put a question in the chat that's like cocky. And I think that you're confident. Your your comment earlier, like, cocky versus confidence. There's a thin line there. 
Tell me what, like, regarding with the team and and being that goalkeeper with that cocky slash confident attitude, what's the what's the boundary? What's the limit? How does that work with teammates? Um, I had a little process where no matter how well I played, um, if I had an interview after the game, let's say I got man of the match or anything, I kind of would – not talk about myself. I would talk about the team. I would say, they'd be like, oh, you make great saves tonight, blah, blah, blah. And I'd say, thank you. But, you know, my defenders were on point today. My my forwards finished. So you kind of, you already know you kind of played well. That's yep. going to take care of itself. Then you push it back on your players and give them a little bit of props as well. Um, and it's just every time you step on the field, you gotta you, you have to bring a certain amount of confidence because imagine a quarterback goes into a huddle and uh, you know he he or she's like, uh, oh, guys, um, what should we do? Um, I'm not. I do. What do you think? Uh, I mean, you lost your team, yeah. you know. So you have to step on the field. There's games where. Um, I was so nervous before games, I would, I would throw up. Um, and there's a lot of, believe it or not, guys, there's a lot of players like that. Um, the, the, the nerves get to you, the buildup. And once the funny thing is once you get on the pitch, you're fine, but it's all the buildup, the interviews, the whole, you know, if West Ham are playing Tottenham and, you know, the whole buildup that whole week is just insane. Luton playing Watford, like the buildup on TV, everything. So you have this, but, at no point did I want to show my players that. And that's just something that you have to kind of build into your character and learn how to deal with, because if you come in not confident, that's not a position where you're allowed to be not confident. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that at the higher levels. You have to show confidence. Um, I, I remember playing a game one time. It was my debut for, for in the Premier League. It was at Tottenham Hotspur and, um oh my god if i i was so nervous <laughs> and i remember my buddy texted me right after the game he's like bro you played we lost two one but he's like bro you played so well and dude you look like ice in your veins you look so calm and collective i was like <laughs> wow i go because that's not how i was feeling <laughs> so it's kind of like you gotta fake it to make it or whatever you want to call it but you know it's a position that is very it, it, there's certain characteristics that you have to have and it's confidence dominance you know um you know it, it's it's breeding um a certain feel throughout the team that makes the team better and i've seen goalkeepers um come into games and i've seen a whole switch sometimes bad sometimes good depending on which goalkeeper comes in just off their ability to portray confidence you know, and both keepers were technically probably equal, but one just had that little bit of like, I got you, which is what Ryan was saying earlier. I'm going to real quickly, I want to, I want to go before I jump off this slide. There's two things I want to speak to Ian on your point. And I, and um, Ryan, I want to ask you this question. Um, you spoke about giving credit to others, Ian. Um, Ryan, I want you to tell me why, why is that important to, to like, why is that important in general? Just leave it there. And and then two, why is confidence being portrayed out of your goalkeeper important? Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest thing is we got to understand that we're we're in a team sport. And for us as goalkeepers, the, the saying is true. You make 99 save, you make one mistake, they remember the mistake. So it's important that you build relationship. It's important that you make others around you feel good. You know, it's, it's a community. If everybody in the community is happy, Eventually, when one of us fall, everybody will pick you up. But if you start pissing people off and doing things that is going to label you as, you know, you're you're a cocky person, the minute you make a mistake, there ain't no coming back from that. Everybody's going to make sure they bury you. So for me, the, the, it's, it, it, it's always been in the back of my mind, how can I make someone around me better? If I'm good, the goal is to make somebody else around me better. And if everybody else is thinking like that, Eventually, you start creating, you know, a very positive culture, a healthy, competitive culture. A culture going to drive you to 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 one closer to you know victory, to closer to what the vision is for any organization. Now, the point about being cocky and versus confidence, 
you know, I, I, I personally don't really subscribe to the cockiness, but I understand it's the individual. Everybody's different. You know, I, I prefer bring the thing they call joy in environment. If mm. you bring joy in environment, if people see you're laughing, that means you're telling them that you're enjoying yeah. what you're doing. If they see you're doing, if see you're having fun and and working hard to anything, chances are that also have the same equal effect. That exuberate confidence also. So it's 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 that's my approach. Not judging anybody else's, you know. So I think it's important that we also as coaches and 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 whoever we're teaching understand what are some of our core values. Who are we? We understand our core values, we understand our why, we understand our why, we know our purpose. We know our purpose, then we start living by it on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's what you pour in the environment. And if you pour in the environment, that's what you get back. You know, and you know, I'm a big, big, big fan of you know the environment shapes the individual. So as much as possible, you know, whenever we 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 gather together on any given day as goalkeepers, it's hard work. It's 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 the effort that you put in on a day-to-day -day basis. It's the respect that you show each other on a day-to-day -day basis. It's the inspiration that we draw from each other. Because not every day I'm going to feel like my best. Not every day the next person is going to feel like. But if you could drive an inspiration in just the words, in, in just in action, it's just, hey, get the next rep. Then the last piece of it is easy. It's about having fun. And if we're doing that, I promise you, you know, you're building a successful environment, not just for goalkeepers, but for human beings. And those are things for me is, is the most important thing for the game. Uh, can I check real quick? Yeah, keep going. Got, I'm going to go to the next slide, but you go right ahead, Ian. I got to totally agree with Ryan. I remember one of the things I was, I'm a lot older than you, Ryan. So I, this, was a while, this was a while back. So I was coaching with the national team and something funny happened. It was a ball off the post, hit the player, the, the, the keeper on the head and, so I had a split second where I was like, are you okay? And, you know, he was smiling. He was okay. And then I just started laughing. And the keepers were like, wait. And I was like, what? And they're like, wait, are we allowed to laugh? I go, yeah, you're allowed to laugh. That was funny as anything. <laughs> and I go, why wouldn't you laugh? And the response was, well, the previous keeper coach, we weren't allowed to laugh. And he would be like, this is a national team. We're not allowed. I go, no, I go, look, every keeper in the whole country wants your job. That's enough pressure as it is. I said, as long as you're not goofing off and training, we're going to have a good time. We're going to laugh and I'm going to make jokes and I'm going to make stupid dad jokes that I always do because I'm famous for that. And we're <laughs> going to have a good time and you're going to roll your eyes. And you get, but 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 again, it takes the pressure off and it takes, you know, like Ryan said, you've got to enjoy it. We all started football for one reason. We we're like, ah, oh, this is fun. You're eight years old. You have to learn how to keep that as a coach. And that's the important thing. So, you know, again, it's and I remember, Ryan, you'll know Donovan Ricketts when he was a Galaxy. I was, you know, yep. Yep. same thing. Like we we had we left, you know, we left, but they worked hard. If they crossed that line of, of goofing off, that's different. But we worked hard and we had good laughs. I got a one of my favorite pictures of Galaxy of all time is. There's, there's Ricketts, myself, and Josh Saunders. We're in a, like a triangle. We're doing some drill. I don't even know what it was. We're in Seattle, warm uh, the day before a game in Seattle. And all three of us have our mouth open, biggest smile, laughing. <laughs> it's one of my favorite pictures. No, it, 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 it's it's, it's so, so, so important you mentioned that, Ian, right? Because we, we're all, we, we all love goalkeeping. Everybody on this meeting love goalkeeping and, and when I talk I talk with a lot of passion so it, 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 excuse me if I'm like jumping through your screen you know um oh, we but most image we see these days is like someone just looks so upset I'm like why yeah. would I want to be a goalkeeper if this person who is at playing at the highest level looks so stressed looks so upset like like that's not the game that's not yeah. the, the, the game itself is brings so much stress on us so yeah. If you see someone out there having fun, like the other day I was watching the, the Nations League Cup and I saw the goalkeeper pulling strings from his nose and, <laughs> and, and he's like dancing and, and then he shows up and he makes a PK save. Oh yeah. my God, I want to be like that guy. You know how much kids yeah. are looking at I, I want to be like this because it should be fun. This game should be fun. If it's, it, people come to this game to, for entertainment. We're entertainers. And if we're yeah. having fun in that process and we're working out to your point, Ian, 
man, <coughs> we had so much and developed so much more, you know, you know, super leaders. That's what we're going to call them, super leaders. Because there is not just goalkeeping. It's people who are going to influence the world and have followers, positive followers, and be a positive role model, you know. And, you know, these are the intangibles. That's it. It's the intangibles, those little things. Having right. fun, bringing joy, and working hard. And, Ryan, one of the things I'll piggyback off what you said is that – um those those intangibles, these are think about this in like business or life lessons or in a relationship. Like those are the people you want to be around. Yep. You know, you know, and that's that to me is so important. So I I respect big time the comments and the in the stories you guys are telling here. Um, Charlie, we're gonna go into this next slide here with the five Wait. bullets regarding winning gonna, matches, I, game changing plays. And and you and I were speaking about this during the the gold cup and, and and some of the saves some of these goalkeepers were making and and they were like the little things the little like positioning technical movements that allow them or physical movements that allow them to make these game changing plays or decisions is is also a, a critical factor so charlie your your thoughts on on these five bullets here okay if if i may backtrack um, absolutely yes please on, on- on some of the things that that were brought up before and the on the bullet points um it, there was one that says one bullet point two, two screens ago uh learn and develop from failures and and so i i think that we really need to make sure that when our guys are are failing when our goalkeepers are failing that for the most part they're failing in training because we've put them in realistic situations all right, like realistic situations, um, difference making plays in matches, such as the ball, the ball played behind the defense. Okay. Um, dealing with a cross in a crowded penalty area, dealing with corner kicks in a crowded penalty area, dealing with free kicks, the close range saves. And I think we don't spend enough time putting our goalkeepers in realistic situations especially that ball played behind the defense where there, there's a lot of times you can get that wrong, but, but we want our goalkeepers to get it wrong more in training. Okay. Because we say it's easy to learn. It's easy for us to say we're learning from failure, but for that 15 year old kid, like we had a kid at the national U 15 camp that, that made a bad pass out of the back and got scored on. I, I don't think he recovered from that the, the entire week. So I think that, we have to build, we talk about confidence. I think we have to build this confidence by throwing our keepers in the deep end in training. And I think that comes from the more training they get with realist, real field players in realistic situations, um, the, the better we're going to be. I, and listen, we all talk about this. I still think that, that we're concentrating. There's still a lot of nonsense. You know, um, every day, I don't know how I get this on my phone, but every day on on my, on my Instagram, I have like four goalkeeping drills. And Mm -hmm. so some of them are really good. And other ones are just, it's nonsense. A lot of them are just nonsense. And so that would be my thing before I answer your question. And then the last thing is, is the the keepers I work with now with, with us soccer, I tell them, if you want to emulate an athlete, emulate Patrick Mahomes. I said, if you talk about like, a guy that's a leader. His interior lineman want to play for him. The guy's a winner. He's confident. It, it, you know, if you can translate his characteristics into yourself as a goalkeeper, and we got a Chiefs fan out there too um, that just texted in. That that to me is is probably the the best non soccer example of an athlete. So, all right, uh, game changing plays. Yeah, you and I talked about this a lot. I think that the the keeper that can make those snuffing out, snuffing out that through ball um, that's played behind the defense, making that, I call it a point blank save, making that close range save from, from 12 yards out. Uh, I'm thinking of game changing plays. I'm thinking of Courtois against Liverpool in the champions league. I rewatched the highlights um, that, that score could, could have actually been eight um, one. And, and this is, to me, this is what separates the good ones from the great ones is, is making that, that game changing play. And, you know, we've, 
we've been working in in the in the goalkeeper alliance we've been working on like an evaluation sheet and you know what and this is still you know a fledgling system that we're working on here but one of the categories one of the big categories was the goalkeeper that can make that game changing play and and we have to train for that we have to put those the, our keepers in situations where they see these these big plays that are made you know the deflection um, I don't have to, I don't have to tell anybody on the zoom what a game changing play is, but, but to me, that really separates the good ones from the great ones. Yeah. And Ian, let me put this at you. What, what does that do for a team? Oh my gosh, it does everything. It can, it can sway one way or another, whether you make the save or you don't. And it doesn't mean if you don't make the save that you're a bad keeper, but I, you know, when you come up with those those saves, it just it changes games in an instant. It changes your mentality. It changes the fans. Um, I even tell my keepers that, you know, when you're playing in front of a crowd and, and um, everything, whether it's a crowd or whether it's a U10 game, it doesn't matter. Even if the ref, <clears throat> if the referee calls offside, still make the save. <laughs> because when the other team sees that ball hit the net. It's a psychological boost. So there was times where there was a 1v1 I had in a game, and I hate to use myself as an example, but it's a, it's a story I have, is a uh, through ball came. I saw the flag go up. The player kept going, and I smashed him in. Not, not, not dirty, but just I went, I slid out, legs open, start like, boom, smashed through him. And I got the ball, made the save. And he goes, dude, it was offside. I go, I know. I go, oh, you ain't scoring on me today. Huh. I told him that. A little smirk, you know, a little smile. But I said, you're not scoring on me today. I don't care if it's offside or not. I'm, I'm still playing. So, you know, in other words, don't come near me. I'm going to come hard. And, you know, that's another, like, intangible where you have this, I am not going to get scored on today mentality. I am not letting – and that – I used to have it in training. Now, deep down, I knew we take a thousand shots in training. I'm sure one of, them, one of them and many days, multiple went in. But in my mind, I wanted to build that mentality of just complete and utter dominance and just I'm going to try for everything. I, you know? And that's the work ethic we're talking about and, you know, and, and those things. I love that, man. I love the presence, the intimidation, that whole this. this you just spoke to this without even being asked to. And and I think it's phenomenal too. Uh, yeah, Ryan, Ryan, speak to me or speak to us. Let me rephrase regarding presence, intimidation, physically in the positioning and, you know, at the same time, the calmness and poise with your teammates. Okay, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this to a different um, angle right now. Many, many, many years ago, I got that opportunity to, to work with this MLS great goalkeeper. He's actually on the call right now, John Bush. Mm. Bush. When people up, talk about residents, the first thing they think about it's six foot ten, you know, seven footers, you know. But here's a goalkeeper below six foot. And let Legend. me tell you this: this guy is unbelievable. It's like there's a wall in the goal, but it it, it didn't just transpire by game day. To to Ian's point, to to Charlie's point. This is days and weeks and months of work, day in, day out, intense focus, concentration, every single day, training harder than the game. So when he steps in the game, it's, it's, it's easy because these are things that he's been doing every single day. He makes people around him better every single day. He demands things from people every single day. You know, I, I'm working as a young, came to work with him as a young goalkeeper. I'm like, oh my God, I thought I was intense. I thought they had prison. This mm. guy right here is freaking, it's like David and Goliath, man. You know, so he's on the call here and I want to tell him it's maximum respect, John Bush. You know, because I think more goalkeepers can be, you know, should use you as an inspiration when we talk about present intimidation physically. A guy will have optimal position in Every single time when he plays the game, talk about big games. So, mad respect, and he also exuberate that that calmness and poise 
you know, in, in crucial moments for his team. That's why you have yes. a successful career. You know, and young goalkeepers who are on the slide right now take a time out to go and check some of the work that he's been doing and has done over the, over the years, you know. And uh, again, my respect to you, brother. And, and John, sorry to interrupt. John doesn't know this. I use John as an as same with you, Ryan, as an example all the time of keepers get told, you're too small, you're too this, you're too... I go, you're not too this, too that. I go, look this guy up and tell me that he didn't do well. And not only that, he's an amazing human being. Yep. And I'm sure... Um, here's another uh, little little thing that we could throw in there is the word uh, resilience. I mean, the amount of times he's probably been told you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, he's had to have probably a lot of resilience in, in, in you know, making it to where he did. Um, so, yeah, that's I'm another gonna... I'm going to jump in there right now and, and literally, um, guys, that for those of you that don't know John Bush, 20 plus year MLS veteran, uh, goalkeeper of the year in the MLS, a national team goalkeeper. Johnny, if, if, if you're comfortable, I'm going to put you on the spot. Well, I would love for you to participate as they brought you in. Tell me about like what what made your presence special from a, from just you on the pitch being five foot 10 and 160 pounds soaking wet. And I'm exaggerating in both aspects, I'm sure, but I'd love your comments on that. Well, first of all, gentlemen, thanks for inviting me. I slowly got on here to listen to Ann and Ryan and Charlie because <laughs> I was intrigued. I wanted to hear, obviously I know all three of them. Um, I respect all three of them quite a bit and I'm just here to learn, to be quite honest. Uh, I'm actually in a hotel in Hartford, Connecticut for a game tomorrow. So, we got back from dinner. I figured I'd jump on and listen, but uh, I appreciate it. And uh, I will pay you guys all later for all the kind words you said. Yeah. Uh, that just that just cleared my bank account out, but uh, it's well worth it. Um, for me, I think, you know, and, and five nine or five ten is being generous, uh, but that's what I listed myself as. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll stay with that. We'll definitely stay with that, Eric. Um, but for me, I think, you know, and, and, Ian and I had this conversation probably, you know, a hundred years ago or so, but like for me, you know, I, I never had, I couldn't take a day off. Right. I, I didn't have the luxury of, of being the eye candy as Charlie said, I'm, I'm not anybody's eye candy, you know? <laughs> and, and so for me, every day was, was my world cup. I remember a specific conversation one day when I was playing in San Jose with Alan Gordon, who was a fantastic forward. Um, you know, scored a lot of important goals for not only San Jose, but also LA Galaxy back in the day. Um, you know, but we came in on, after a Tuesday morning training, uh, playing small sided that day. And I was, you know, I was fired up. And when I got off, I was annoyed because I lost the final game, you know, and I was barking at somebody. I know that's hard to believe, but I was barking at somebody about it. And, you know, and he kind of pulled me aside. He's like, you know, you need to, you need to just relax. It's okay. It's Tuesday morning. And I was like, no, that's not the way I handle my business. You know, like for me, it was, it was we train and how we prepare is how we're going to play. And again, I didn't have the luxury of, of, in essence, the eye candy. So I knew every day for me had to be as close to perfect as possible. You know, I had to prove every day that, you know, at, at five, nine, I was good enough. And so I, I didn't take days off. I did extra work every single day. Um, and, and that was, that was what worked for me, you know? And so, um, that was just the way I kind of looked at it and, and, you know, went about my business. Um, you know, I think it, it's been fascinating listening to you guys talk so much because now as a, as a coach, you know, and, and retired as a player and being a coach, you know, I, I see some of the important things that you guys have been talking about, you know, whether you're talking about the presence of a goalkeeper or, I think Ian hit on something earlier of having relationships and, and we talked about relationships, but it's not just with, you know, your players. It's not just with your goalkeeper to the defenders. Obviously that's very important because if they don't want to play for you, you're in trouble. It doesn't matter how good you are, but also the importance of your relationship with your goalkeeper coach and vice versa, the trust that's there. You know, Ryan talked about the trust that him and Matt built during the goal cup. Um, you know, and, and, and that is so, so important because 
especially for younger goalkeepers, it, regardless of if they're you know young pros, college players, youth players, that that relationship that you build with your goalkeeper coach and and vice versa from the goalkeeper coach to the players um and and just the trust that you have to have you know for instance here in Pittsburgh I've got three young goalkeepers right I've got my number one is the Jamaican number two okay and then I've got two young kids straight out of college um and it, and it's about building relationships with all of them but then also building relationships with each one individually because they're they're slightly different and having that trust I need Jamali to have trust in me and I have trust in him, all right, because he, you know, we need him to win games. I can't go out there and, and try to win games anymore, you know. And and if he trusts me and something that I'm telling him, whether it's during the week in preparation or, you know, penalty kicks, I, I look at I look at every opponent, you know, the, the day before, and I have in my notebook on the, on the bench uh, every one of their penalty kicks. And we have our we have our signals, just like Ryan was talking about earlier, you know, and if we have a if we definitely have a feeling on one, you know, but I always tell him, like, listen, you're the one standing there. If you if you feel something else or you see something else, go with your gut. Um, But that trust that that we have to build ultimately gets your goalkeepers into that next level that that Ann and these guys were talking about earlier. You know, if you look at you look at kind of my three teams that I played for and and my most consistent times were probably in San Jose, right? Because I had a goalkeeper coach Jason Batty who I had built such a great relationship with him. You know, first and foremost as Ryan says, we're all humans. Right? So you have to respect that part of it. Uh, but he also knew that how important goalkeeping was to me and how important my job was to me. And um, he understood that and he respected that and, and vice versa for me to him, you know, I, I understood what was important to him, um, you know, and, and his family and things like that. So that mutual respect, I think built what we, what we ended up doing in San Jose and, and was probably one of the biggest reasons that was probably my most consistent time. Yes. I won goalkeeper of the year uh, in Chicago, but my mo- most consistent year to year game to game was probably that five year stint in San Jose and, and a large amount of the, uh, of the uh, rewards has to go to, to Batty and, and just the, the relationship we built over that five year period. I love it. Love it. Bushy, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for jumping in there, bud. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to mute myself now again. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Brother, much respect, Bushy. Thanks, boys. I appreciate it. So let's... Thanks, John. Let's do this. Let's open this up for questions. We've been been speaking for a while, so I'm just going to halt, if I could, and, and let any coaches, players, goalkeepers and have, have a word and, and speak their comments or, or questions to the fellas at the same time, coaches, if there's anything also that you'd want to share and kind of in a summer summarize, go, go right ahead. Hey, Eric, can I just want to yeah, inject one thing? Go I, right ahead. No, I, I texted to the group. I don't know if it came out. I, I don't want to be the only one without a John Bush story. So I'm going to go <laughs> ahead. And, 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 um, I, I asked my first big, Coaching job was uh, coaching ODP Region One uh, goalkeepers, and uh, I took over for Bobby Clark. So you talk about like uh, s- you know having big shoes to fill. Um, actually, Real John quickly, Bush, Bobby Clark was a goalkeeper. Co- he's a goalkeeper from from England, England, but he's from Dartmouth. If I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, he's a, like beyond the legend. Um, yes, beyond legend, legend is correct. Keep going. Yeah, Just want to make sure that's apparent. John probably doesn't remember, but I. I, I was his goalkeeper coach um, for that time. And, and he had an amazing work ethic. But w- what I will say is, is in, in scouting meetings, like the pro when you bring up the profile, and I think it's important because guys have asked me this before to say Matt Turner. Yeah. And then who's another one, Ethan Horvath, what do they have in common? They're tall. The wingspan is very important, you know, nowadays, but I, I always have to mention to bring up, let's not rule out the John Bushes, you know, um, the Luis Robles, Nick Romando guys, um, mm-hmm. because 
they, they also they also are guys that, that need to be in the loop and consider. Let's not just immediately eliminate a guy because of yeah the eye candy. Love it. Agreed. No, I agree. Uh, guy, all right, everyone, questions, comments, thoughts. Anyone from who's been watching this for close to an hour now? I have a question. Please go right ahead. Who is this? It's Andreas. Oh, Andreas, go right ahead, sir. Hey, great, great, great webinar, seminar, workshop, whatever you want to call it. This is great. I think everybody should send this out to everybody in their in their goalkeeping space. Um, so I have a question, and then I'll mute myself. Um, so how much pressure? Um, do goalkeeper coaches at the professional level have um, when you when you do see one goalkeeper better than another? Uh, who makes the decision? How much pressure do you get maybe from head coaches slash board of directors, owners in, in making the selection on who starts that goalkeeper? Is it performance-based? Is it the intangibles plus performance-based? Is it the goalkeeper selection is it a combination of everything, and I'll I'll mute myself. Ian, Charlie, Ryan, what's your take on that? It's interesting. Sorry. It's interesting. Right, it, it, right it, ahead, Ryan. It it varies based off the environment that you're in, right? For example, I'm in the the MLS Next Pro environment right now, and we have first team goalkeepers that that's that's signed you know and what happened is they get sent down once they get sent down they have to play and then it could be the number two for the first team it could be the number three for the first team so sometimes it doesn't really matter you know what the so-called number one goalkeeper is doing at the moment if they're playing out of their mind you know we cater to the first team so once a first team goalkeeper step down it's just part of the process of them, you know, getting the, the minutes. Now, in the USL Championship, you know, when, you know, I was a goalkeeper coach, then assistant coach, then head coach, the process was different. It was whoever is playing better plays. I've also been in an environment where same things, same scenario, MLS teams send down a goalkeeper, and it doesn't matter what other goalkeeper is doing. That goalkeeper has to pay because this is someone that doesn't count against their budget. MLS is paying for these goalkeepers in the USL environment. So chances are they have to play. I've also been in an environment where the MLS team is like, you know what, this goalkeeper needs to earn their spot. And this was a classic example when Nashville loaned um, Elliot Panico, you know, to Austin Bold in 2001. You know, it was communicated if he's not playing well, it's okay to put him on the bench. So it was clear, goalkeeper coach, you on a day-to-day -day basis is going to give feedback as to who is performing the best. We're going to use the games, you know, short the week, the best goalkeeper plays. And it, it worked out well because Elliot was better and he, he earned it. And to your point, Andreas, it's, it's for me, I, I believe it should be merit. I believe the best goalkeeper should play. And I believe also there should, you should prepare all the goalkeepers as number ones. And I don't believe in the one, two, three, four system. I believe all single one of us is number one. And at any given day, whoever plays, the rest job is to support whoever is out there playing. That is my personal belief. You know, that's what Coach Campbell, Paul Campbell did for all the Jamaican goalkeepers over the years. And I've seen a bear fruit up to 10 years later. Once he left, there are still Jamaican goalkeepers coming. So my point is, it's we're all human beings to, to what we talk about. And the individual who is playing and performing at the highest possible rate should be playing. And if they're not, then the next person steps up, next next man up, next woman up, next goalkeeper up. That's my Love belief. It. Ryan, that's fantastic. Charlie, Ian, anything you want to add to that regarding Ian um, Andreas's question? I, I typed in a text, did I? Did you, uh, you may have. It? I haven't seen it, but I have two. Go ahead, Ian. I'll get to that in a moment, Charlie. Sorry. If you want to repeat it, Charlie, go right ahead. No, there's a great piece in The Athletic talking about um, Arsenal and Ramsdale and, and Ryan. And, and is this kind of – competition healthy for for the goalkeepers and for the team so instead of me uh you know going on talking about it uh yep. it, it was just in last week really good piece for everyone to read if you get you know, the athletic i know exactly what you're talking about with the with the Ar arsenal goalkeeping situation they brought in right. two number ones and, and yeah. is it healthy is it a healthy yeah. environment it does it bring doubt into the equation 
Um, right. Definitely a whole nother uh, session. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, let me ask you guys this. I have two questions here in the chat. Um, please continue to put your questions in the chat, but I have two here. Um, fellas, how old is it? How old is too old to start training in the sport with the goal of playing in college or even going pro? I'm assuming that's based on Turner's experience, but what's your take on that? How old is too old to to start or to? The, the, sure. yeah, yeah, the verbiage is too old to start training in the sport with the goal of playing in college or going pro. Right. I mean, I've had a 17-year-old that um, picked up football at age 16, goalkeeping, and at age 18, he was um, he went off to college, and at age 20, he was he was he was playing in a professional environment. So there's exceptions to every rule, and there's no one path. I think you know um, he was an athlete. He was a scratch golfer. So anybody that plays golf knows how difficult that damn sport it is. Um, so he picked up subtleties very quickly. Um, so I, 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 my personal opinion is there's, it's, I don't want to say never too late, but I mean, you know, there are, there are, there are stories of people picking up uh, the sport really, really late and making it late. You know, you look at Mendy and he was, I think in a bakery in France at uh, age 27. And then at age 30, he was winning a champions league. So don't let anybody tell you what, what path there is to take you, you, you again, going back to the other intangible that we talked about earlier is resilience. If you want to do it, you do it and it's going to happen or won't. And you know, don't let anybody tell you, um, or, you know, what, what, what can and cannot happen. I'm the best example of, having not a lot of talent going over to Europe at 16. Um, but I definitely had a lot of work ethic, resilience. Um, and when I went over, there was not, there was only one American player. I was the first American goalkeeper. And the first thing I got told was go home and play basketball, go home and play football. And I told them I'm not here to play. Uh, I'm here to play football, but not, not the one you're thinking of. And so that path, was very, very different. And I'm sure if you were to ask people before I left, what are the chances of being making it in Europe? It would be very slim to none. And, but in my mind, it was a hundred percent. And that's all that mattered. You know, yeah. more, more, what I told myself is all that mattered. So again, going back to the question, it just mm -hmm. depends on the individual, how bad they want it um, and how bad they're, how much they're willing to work for it. Hey, Ryan, uh, I could see, uh, Ryan, right I can ahead, see Charlie. you warming up. Yeah. Ryan, I can see you warming up. I can see your eyes, and you got all kinds. Yeah, of yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I can, I can no, read it's, your it's, mind. It's, it's, uh, I, I'm a I'm a firm believer in this. You only your best is good good enough. You know, you you give your best every single day, every single day. You focus on the fine details each day. It's like planting a seed. You know, you till the soil, you plant the seed, you water the plant. And you, and you open pray for the sunshine or the rain. And, and it, you keep doing that every single day. You have no idea when the tree is going to grow and bear fruit. It's it's like that. If you set your eye too much on, oh, I need to get to college, I need to get to college, you're going to be distracted and find things that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis that's actually going to get you there. So my point is, it's never too late. It's never, ever too late. I started at 14. At 17, I'm playing for my country. At 14, 15, 16, I was the worst goalkeeper in the entire Caribbean. Oh, but one day it clicked. One day it finally clicked. And it was a so whole idea of showing up every single day with a smile on my face, first day, last one leaving. So if you want it bad enough to Ian point, you got to go get it. You got to believe it. You got to work for it. And if you have a supported system, even better. Yeah. And the, the, yeah Eric, I, I just want to jump in because this is, right something, ahead, this is something you and I have, have talked about. And, yeah, and yeah. I talked I, I talk <laughs> to about almost any soccer person or soccer, certainly goalkeeper coaches that will listen is that I come away from showcases and scouting. And I, I just say to myself, are these the best athletes that we have? Like we're in a big, big market showcase and aren't there better athletes in, in this country? And the answer is yes. And I think we need to get to the point where youth coaches and especially on the goalkeeper coaches need to, for lack of a better term, 
go out and start recruiting some of these kids at, at age 11, 12, even up to 14, I would say, because listen, if, if you, if there's 50, if there's 50 points that you need to become a good goalkeeper, you've got 25 of them already in your bank. If you're a good athlete. And I, and I think we have a surplus of good athletes, but I think we need to really get out and um, you know, in the, in the market and really for lack of a better term, recruit these kids. Uh, so I'm, I'm just for an example. So you don't, you don't think I'm just, you know, I'm just rambling about this. It, if you ask the kids on your team, do you know anybody you think would be a good goalkeeper? The 12 year old they ask maybe some of the parents, do you know, anybody that's got athletic skills, a kid that plays basketball, volleyball, do you think he'd be a good goalkeeper? Um, uh, yeah, we're going to find, um, we're going to find the, the, the next Matt Turner, you know, we're, we're going to find, um, you know, the next Ethan Horvath, but I think we have a lot of kids that, that we need to bring into this position. I don't know how anyone else feels about it, but I feel so. Oh, you're and Charlie, you're right. We we spoke about that that exact topic a lot, and it's interesting to uh, to to hear that question kind of come about and and bring that your comments to fruition here in this in this scenario here. Um, the other one last question that was on the chat was um, twelve year old son's been listening. What advice would you give him as being a smaller goalie, but as the heart and drive bigger than others? And I think those questions that question's been answered by a lot of the things you guys have all said already. So I'm going to uh, leave it at that. If that's okay, Breer. Um, I'm going to quick, I'm going to leave this up here for, for contact information. And, and, you know, if you want to reach out to any of these coaches, Charlie, Ian, or Ryan, you know, by all means, they're, they're accessible. Um, and, and not only are they accessible, they're great people as you found out tonight and will help you with whatever they, they can. Um, that said, I do want to give them kind of final words, so to speak, as we started top to bottom, I'm going to end going bottom to top. So Ryan, if I could start with you, what would be your final comments for tonight? Before I go into the final comment, I want to say I genuinely enjoy this conversation. And as always, you know, it's an opportunity for me to, to, to grow uh, as a coach, as a mentor and as a friend. You know, so, uh, you know, Ian, Charlie, thank you, Eric, thank you, you know, for the shared knowledge. Um, the thing I want to send, you know, message wise is y y you got to have passion and purpose, whatever you're doing, man. You have passion and purpose. That's 90 percent of the battle, maybe 99 percent of the battle. The rest, the rest is just go do it. Just go do it. Be a great human being. You know, I, I listen, I listen, I listen to this quote. Actually, I saw this quote floating around um on, on, on Instagram, you know, by Kennedy. I've always admired great men, but when I met great men, I realized great men weren't good men. So it's time for good men to become great men. And this right here for me, it 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 touched me to the core. One of the deepest quotes I've heard. Because it's time for good people to be great leaders out there, man. It's time for us to go and do it. And this forum, this 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 purpose that we're chasing for right here in this goalkeeping community, we need people like us at the forefront driving this. So goalkeeping and goalkeepers could have great experiences, not just as you know as as a goalkeeper, but as a person. This right here will change the world. This right here, you will get more. At least to your point, Charlie, wanting to be a part of this group because they see us out there wearing our heart on the sleeve. They see us out there working hard. They see us out there having passion and purpose, and also have enjoying the process. So that would be my 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 two cents to to everybody else who is listening. You know, this has been great for me. You know, sharing awesome. sharing whatever knowledge I have. Ryan, man, you know this respect. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Ian, what's your uh, final comments, brother? I, I don't even know how to follow that. Like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm almost in tears here, man. It's, it's <laughs> we go back to the humble part. I mean, this guy's done everything in the sport and in goalkeeping, and he's just yet so humble and passionate. It's just, it's so beautiful. I mean, that's the only word I have. Um, I think one of the things that I just feel I always can can help with keepers and it, it, it kind of makes me sad sometimes is, 
you know, the keepers that give up because of what a coach has said or uh, what a players and, and, and an environment has said, you're not good enough, you're this, you're that. Um, I'm not trying to promote myself, but I want everybody to go on and just go on to my Instagram and, and click on my highlight reel. And on my highlight reel, on purpose, I put video of what I had when I was playing. Um, it was probably between maybe 10 and 12 years old. I was absolutely shocking. <laughs> and I'm like, I see these kids that are 20, a thousand times better than me at the same age, getting told you're not good enough. And I'm like, no, you got to just keep going. And that's the resilience. That's the other thing we talked about. You got to build this resilience and you have to find the environment that will help you with that. We've all had, you know, John talked about his keeper coach. Ryan talked about his keeper coach. Charlie talked about how, you know, he influenced John back at ODP. And we have all these great coaches. <laughs> you got to find these coaches that can inspire you to become great and believe in you to become great and have the same self-belief. And when you do come across a coach that tells you you're not good enough, respectfully you 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 take another turn and you you keep going and you just keep believing in your dream and like i said the only reason i want to bring that up is i wasn't this amazing taught i, I didn't have a lot of training but i had desire and i had resilience and i had a, a passion and it led me to an amazing career and now amazing career as a coach and you know you just have to keep going if that's what you want to do and whenever you have those self-doubt moments, you just have to ask the question, do I still want this? Do you, if the answer is yes, you just keep going. And you just keep working hard and you do what John Bush said. You don't take a day off. You keep going. You work on the little details like Ryan said and all of these different things. And there's so many different success stories that you cannot put them into one category. Every single athlete I've worked with, and I've worked with thousands of athletes and I've played with thousands of athletes, Man, I would watch every single one of their stories if you if you put it in a documentary. I would sit there on Netflix and just watch it for a year straight and just go, these are some amazing stories. They're all different. They all have their different moments. And so just keep going. You know, that's that's my advice. I appreciate that. Ian, thank you. And it's almost like someone hey, asked. Hey, Eric, can I jump in real quick? Cap us. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, Ian, you forgot to say you're the best DJ in the in the West Coast. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> You're my man. I love it. I also do a little bit of mixing, guys. So at Ian for your music, go check me out. I <laughs> love it. Yeah, oh, so out I, like I got another one coming up. Hey, you're gonna love it. It's I got yes. another mix coming out in about a week. So Ian's You'll a professional it. DJ on the side, everybody. Yeah, if anyone's looking for professor. a house party with a special DJ, Ian's your man. <laughs> That's great. That's funny. Charlie, if you yeah. could wrap up, please. Last words from you. Yes, yes. No, I don't use these words uh, very often, but it, one, it was a pleasure. I mean, I could do this. I could do this once a week, and it was an honor. It really was to be on with you know great goalkeeper coaches. And and listen, I saw you know the view of the people out there. Um, you know, there's a lot of good coaches out there, and, and to have John Bush jump into yeah, th this was this was just great. Um, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to tell you, don't go on my highlight reel. Okay. Um, you're not going to see, you're not going to, you're not going to get better and you're not going to be inspired. But here's <laughs> just a message that I would like to send out, um, you know, especially to the developing goalkeeper coaches out there. I, I really think that we need to, to, to stay away from the nonsense and we need to do more game related training where we're recreating these difference making plays crosses in a crowded box dealing with corner kicks dealing with free kicks especially the ball played behind the defense and we need to do these training as often as we can with real field players because i believe that's the i believe that's the the future of, of goalkeeper training is working with with real field players because real field players are better on one versus one they're better at crossing the ball. They're better at, at curving the ball. They hit better first-time shots. And more than anything, we talk about like intangibles. 
one of the big intangibles that was listed was reading the opponent. And we can't expect our goalkeepers to be able to read opponents and other field players if all they're doing is training against other goalkeepers or getting shots from the goalkeeper coach. But I, I really believe this is is the next wave uh, and, and the future of, of goalkeeper training. Mark the, mark the tape on that one here, okay? I, <laughs> I said it. I said it. No, no, honestly, I, that would be my one – recommendation especially for the developing and i know there's a lot of developing goalkeeper coaches that that were listening tonight so general i i seriously i i enjoyed the heck out of this tonight Charlie, it also save our hips as coaches too so it's a good thought i was just thinking the same thing right <laughs> oh guys yeah. well listen charlie ian Char charlie ian ryan um personally you you know that my friendships are valued with the three of you. And, and I appreciate your time tonight. I know many have taken in this knowledge tonight and many are going to take in this knowledge in the future. Once this recording is released um, and are going to be honored and excited and, and just, they're just going to learn from this. And I thank you for sharing your experiences, for sharing your knowledge. Um, and, and literally it's, I, I say this all the time and I'm, I'm going to say it one more time. I've already said it again earlier in this session, but you know, it, these are life lessons. You know, this is, you're, you're interviewing for a job. This is a relationship. These are, you know, there's a lot of personality traits that you talked about tonight that separate, you know, the, the great from the great. And, and I just want to thank you for, for making those points clear tonight. Thank you very much, guys. Well, thank you. I just want to say, this is a small, this is a small community. My daughter's friend, Jamie Scrufke, just, just texted in. Boy, was that is it great to hear from you, Jamie? <laughs> it's awesome. Man. I haven't seen her Ryan, since my daughter was in high Sunday. school. I'm I'm gonna see you Sunday, Ryan. We play against you. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you're coming down. I'm hey. coming down, I'll be there. We, we, we'll have a chat we, have, we have a chat after the game. Uh, after the exactly. proof. Wanna it's see the same game? <laughs> I, I say this in my college and training environment. It's always fun beating friends. So yeah. Ryan, Ian, good luck against one another on Amazing. Saturday this weekend. I was hoping you'd give up some like inside information, Ryan, but you kept uh, it tight. Was good. <laughs> you stay professional. Everybody, every month we put on free education for parents, goalkeepers, and coaches. What you see here is our agenda for the next four months, September, October, November, and December. Um, again, Coach Charlie, Coach Ian, Coach Ryan, thank you for your time tonight. Everyone, have an awesome, awesome end of your summer. And thank you for joining us tonight.